Hello everyone, my name is Sam Schaefer and I'm the Communication Specialist with the Poultry Science Association. This interview is the first of a series called Let's Squawk About It, where we video chat with poultry scientists on various topics. Today we are sitting with Kim Macklin from the Department of Poultry Science at Auburn University to discuss some of the things going on in today's world as it relates to poultry production and biosecurity. With that being said, Ken, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your area of expertise? Well, thank you, Sam. This is Ken Macklin, as he had said, um, a full professor and extension specialist here at Auburn University. My area of research is in poultry diseases, specifically bacterial diseases. Uh, a lot of my extension program deals with working with farmers in biosecurity, litter management, uh, disease control in general. Pretty much what I do. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Ken. Well, we appreciate having you. And with all that being said, we know there's a lot going on in the world right now with COVID-19 and it's affecting everyone in every type of sector in a different way. Mm -hmm. So um, with the effects of COVID-19, we've seen an increase in poultry products flying off of the shelves, both egg and meat products. So what is your what is your interpretation of why that is? Why do you think those products seem to be flying off of the shelves? Well, the poultry meat and egg products are flying off the shelf, A, because there's just a lot of panic in the world right now. Uh, panic that, you know, the food's gonna run out and go away. Um, so people are, are stocking up uh, is the main reason. The other thing that's going on in the world right now is this, just, just that, just people are worried, you know, they don't know where the food's coming from. If you listen to the news, uh, there's a lot of concern with these processing plants closing down that, you know, there will be no food available. However, uh, that's not the case. I mean, th there's plenty of food uh, mm -hmm. out there, uh, not only poultry, but in other uh, meat product as well. And with that, I mean, with you saying there is plenty of food to go around, with all of this food flying off the shelves, how do you think that's impacting the poultry industry's turnaround on replenishing the supply? I mean, I know you mentioned there's plenty of food to go around, but what do you think that they're doing to make sure that there is a constant supply and that customer demands are being met? Well, they've extended their working time. They're working now Saturdays, uh, adding extra shifts. Of course, there have been some plant closures which have impacted the, the, the amount being uh, produced. I know there's concern over the plant closures that are taking place, but in the wide scope of things, the number of places that have been shut down, is that something people need to be concerned with? Are there more, are there more plants that are, be, that are not being taken into consideration with the plants being closed down? What's your, what's your thought on that? There is some concern from the standpoint where, you know, obviously if a plant's being temporarily closed for a few days or a week, you know, they got to find a place to market these animals that they could, you know, uh, divert, you know, these animals to, to get processed. Uh, or uh, they could just not process it as fully. You know, here in Alabama, what we've seen, because we have, you know, a lot of poultry production here, is a lot of these companies are still processing their chickens, but they're, you know, the typical uh, market that they have available isn't there. You know, food service, a lot of the restaurants. So what they're doing is they're selling box, 40 pound boxes of chicken for like prices you can't even imagine, you know, 40 pound uh, box of chicken breast, I think it was like $53 for the oh. box. So, I wow. mean, they're doing what they can to, to get the product out. Mm -hmm. You know, probably in the short term, what that means, or the shorter term is obviously the poultry, there's gonna be a, a lot on the market. Um, you know, on the company side, they're gonna react by obviously not placing as many birds because, or as many chicks, because, you know, there's just is not gonna be the processing capacity that they're looking at or the markets available. Uh, what that means, again, going back to the typical consumer, and again, this is all my opinion, I think they won't see a large impact uh, directly. However, once the uh, restaurants and food services open up again, there may be a little lag going on there. Now, with that said, you know, I'm sure they have freezers full of chicken still mm -hmm. lying around. So, I mean, <laughs> will we as the consumer see it? Not necessarily. Um, at least I don't believe we're gonna see it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, more what the biggest concern is, is just the people going out and panic buying up everything. Like, you know, the, the, the classic example that everyone's kind of made fun of is toilet paper. I mean, mm -hmm. toilet paper, it's hard to find toilet paper in certain parts of the country. Uh, my parents who live in Northern Indiana, not to tout on them, they have a hard time finding toilet paper. But while well, here in, in Alabama where I live in Auburn, I mean, 
not every store will have a, a full supply of toilet paper, but it's it's never been an issue. And what you mentioned about like what you just said about 40 pound boxes of chicken going for 50 some dollars. I mean, I would think that the panic buying would be more because the prices will be low. And you're hundred percent correct. Actually, I was just on a phone call last week where, you know, the other item that you can't find if you go to the store or if you look online are freezers. People that are buying these huge stores of chicken and other meat, uh, you know, frozen products, you know, they need a freezer to put it in. And well, there's no freezers to be found in the country, it seems. Yeah, it's interesting how it can be a domino effect and one thing impacts another thing that you just, it's it's just interesting how all of this plays out. One other thing I wanted to ask you about involves the biosecurity, which you, you do a lot of research in, that's kind of like your area. What biosecurity measures are in place to ensure that customers are receiving safe products from the producers? Well, one thing since the COVID-19 outbreak has occurred, you know, in processing plants, uh, what a lot of them have adopted, and I think they're all moving towards that, where they're doing the social distancing between each other to prevent spread from each other, because obviously if they prevent spread, if someone's sick, you know, it won't uh, contaminate the, the packing material, not so much the product. Uh, the other thing they're doing is they're taking the, the, the workers' temperatures to make sure that no one who's sick gets in there in the first place. Like I mentioned, the six foot distance, they are wearing masks and they've always wore gloves. And a lot of them would wear masks to begin with. So uh, as far as the product that's going to the consumer, you know, it's, it's fine. Uh, you know, one recommendation, you know, is to wipe off the packaging because you don't know once it leaves that processing plant, you know, it goes obviously on the truck and gets to your store and you don't know who's been around there coughing or whatever. So really the biosecurity measures have been in place for a while now. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, yes. You know, if you think about biosecurity in the poultry farm, you know, I mentioned there in the processing plant, which are some changes that they made now in the poultry farm, there's always been biosecurity in place. And, you know, that's actually what we're being asked to do right now as, as citizens in this country. Uh, you know, some of the general rules of biosecurity are, you know, one thing is to keep your distance or to keep, you know, in the chicken house, you don't want to have strangers coming in your house or foreign, uh, like birds or anything that could potentially carry disease. You don't want strangers coming in who could potentially bring in disease from their flock or from somewhere else. So you want to keep distance, which is what we're being asked to do. Um, you know, you want to be like as sanitary as possible. You know, when you enter a chicken house, it's a good idea, again, to change your clothes and your shoes and put on shoe covers and wash your hands if possible. And then when you leave, immediately change out again what we're being asked to do, you know, when I leave here, um, you know, I'll go to my car and, and, you know, I'll be probably holding the handrail maybe, but definitely I'll sanitize my hands. I get in the car because I don't want to contaminate my car Mm -hmm. uh, or my family, obviously, when I get home. So, you know, the biosecurity programs have been placed in in, in just not only in poultry, but animal uh, production have been in place for a while to help protect our food supply from uh, a disease, maybe not the coronavirus, like, like what we're dealing with in human population now, but with other bacteria and viruses that can cause severe illness in, in chicken. So yes, we're being asked to follow biosecurity like they have in, in animal production. Right. I mean, I know that from a, another side. My sister actually used to work on a hog farm. She would have to shower as she would enter the, the facility with the animals and shower when she leaves. I think that we have seen some changes, kind of like you mentioned with sanitizing, you know, a little bit more cautiously, people should feel comfortable knowing that their food is being handled safely. Oh yeah, well, and, and, and like I said, I think, you know, the, at least the poultry farmers that I've talked to, I mean, for them, you know, they haven't changed their what, what they're doing on the farm. It's just more when they go out in the community. Right, and that's one of the things that can sometimes be hard to translate that it doesn't stop just when you leave work. It, it has to continue outside for when you come back to work. That's correct. So with all this being said, I mean, going forward, how do you think biosecurity measures will change after COVID-19 and why or why not? If they will change, how do you think they will? What's your thought on that? Well, my thought is, you know, as far as biosecurity on the the farm, I think that's mainly going to stay in place as it is, because as long as, you know, a good example with biosecurity, at least here in Alabama, we had uh, avian influenza come through in 2017. There in the Midwest, it was 2014-15 2014-15 is when it came through. That taught a lot of the poultry farmers, you know, those that were, were a little lax on their biosecurity, that they got to ratchet it up. With that said, you know, they have been following good biosecurity on the farm. I think more what we're looking at is societal effects 
that may be followed, we may be practicing some biosecurity. More uh, people will be washing their hands, you know, just taking a little bit better care of themselves as far as sanitation, you know, more cognizant when they're out and about, you know, if someone's coughing or if they look sick, practice stay caution. A bit away from mm-hmm. them. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, show some caution. And, and mm-hmm. No, I definitely agree with you. It does sound like going forward, it's not necessarily going to be more biosecurity within these industries because those measures are already being taken place. It's practicing those measures outside of those places for those workers and us as a society in general. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ken, so much for taking the time to share your insights on situations, biosecurity measures, and all of that affecting the poultry industry or not so much affecting the poultry industry, more of just affecting us as a society. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for also tuning in and watching this edition of Let's Squawk About It. Um, for PSA. My name is Sam Schaefer. Ken, thank you again so much. Well, thank you, Sam. It was good talking with you.